As you know, the English language begins with an alphabet of 26 letters. These can be used to make words, and the words can be combined into sentences. When we put these sentences together into paragraphs, we're on our way to creating stories, scripts, plays, books, and other creations that inspire, entertain, inform, and persuade our reading audiences. Today, we begin by looking at the four basic kinds of sentences. The four sentences include declarative, imperative, interrogative, and exclamatory. Every sentence begins with a capital letter and ends with some kind of punctuation, a period, an exclamation point, or a question mark. And then we have this other thing called an interjection. An interjection is not a sentence. This means it's not a complete thought with a subject and a predicate. However, we still begin an interjection with a capital letter and end with some kind of punctuation, usually an exclamation point. More on that in a moment. Let's begin with the declarative sentence. Declarative sentences make a statement about something. Today is a cloudy day is a statement about the clouds in the sky. All sentences, including the declarative sentence, end with some sort of punctuation mark. The declarative ends with a period. In addition, all sentences begin with a capital letter. So here, it's a capital T in the word today. Now let's look at the imperative sentence. Imperative sentences also end with a period, but instead of making a statement, they give a command, or they may more politely make a request. All sentences have a subject, who or what the sentence is about. In an imperative sentence, the subject is you. The person giving a command or making a request is commanding or asking you to do something. The difference here is that the subject isn't written into the sentence. It's understood, which means we just know that you is the subject. Here are two examples. The first one is a command, and the second one is a request. Notice the request is maybe a bit more polite, adding please to the request. Get in your boat and go sailing. It's easy to imagine a person giving you that command. They could say, you, get in your boat and go sailing. But that doesn't sound very nice. So we leave off the you and just say, get in your boat and go sailing. Same thing with the request. You, please go sailing with me. Doesn't sound as polite as, please go sailing with me. So we leave the you off, but we know the person giving the command or making the request is talking to you. Next we have the exclamatory sentence. Exclamatory sentences or exclamations show strong feeling and end with an exclamation mark. Did you notice the exclamation marks in this picture? Here are two examples. You would say, what a hilarious punchline that was. Your voice kind of gives the impression that you're excited, but you can't do that in writing. That's why you add the exclamation point, to clue your readers that you have some strong feelings about the topic of the sentence, in this case, about the punchline. Take the next one. I can't believe you said that. Again, you're shocked that he or she said something, so you say it with emotion to get across the idea that you're surprised or shocked. The exclamation point does that for you when you're writing. When I think of the interrogative sentence, I think of an interrogation, where the questioner asks the person in the chair a series of questions. An interrogative sentence asks a question and ends with a question mark to clue your readers in to the fact that this sentence is different. Where were you last night? would not be said like that. It would go like this. Where were you last night? Notice the change in my voice? Since you can't do that when you write, you must use the question mark to tell your readers that you're asking a question. When you're reading and you see a question mark, your mind automatically changes to hear that little difference in pitch in the voice of the imaginary speaker whose voice comes off the page. That's it for the four kinds of sentences, but what about the interjection? You already know that an interjection isn't really a sentence because it's not a complete thought, but it is a group of words, or sometimes just one word, that expresses strong feeling. 
you're going to need an exclamation point for an interjection just like you do for an exclamatory sentence because of the emotion that you're trying to get across to your readers. Wow, what a ride! Notice how wow isn't really a sentence. Where is the subject, the person or thing the sentence is about? Not there. Where is the predicate that's supposed to tell what the subject is or does? Not there. So this isn't a sentence. It's an interjection. Same with the next one. Ha ha, what a nice horse. Okay, time to test yourself. See if you can get these questions about sentences and interjections correct. Click on Take Quiz Now and see how you do.